Hey guys, we're back with more of the Inseparable Sword run. We are in the Dragon Barrel, just starting off with the Dragon Barrel. Got the Black Blade Kindred first. This should be... Oh god, awful. 272 damage with Sacred Blade. Why am I here? We'll get through it though. We got a Gale after this. Knight's Cav. It'd be nice to get to the Knight's Cavalry while it's still nighttime. Whether or not that will happen, I don't know. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's just, just so pitiful. And these guys, if you're unaware, are resistant to holy. Oh, great. <laughs> and he hurts. Don't charge. I knew he was going to. I knew he was going to. Whenever you heal and he has the axe, he always charges. Guaranteed. If I heal, he would stab. Okay. When stagger. One eighty six. Not good. Where's the edge? Okay, we got some room to work with. I don't think I've ever even been over here. Um, there are no vulgar militia around here, are there? Oh, no. Nice. We got three of these. Three staggers, three posture breaks. I think that's the tankier Black Blade Kindred. I think the one in the Dragon Bearer has less health, but I think the moveset on that one's probably more annoying. Although it's not on a giant hill like this one is. Do we rest? Hmm. Nah. Also, is it even nighttime? It looked like it was nighttime, but now I'm not so sure. Oh, it's morning. Okay, maybe it was nighttime, but then became morning. Either way, the Knight's Cavalry's probably gone. Bummer. Uh oh. Dagger? That's beautiful. How cool would that have been if that actually killed him? I know, like, it wasn't going to. It wasn't going to deal that much damage. That would have been kind of cool. Blessing in disguise is going this way, because this is the way I need to go. It's 
So the Knights Cab's next, then we got Dragon Barrel Cave, Putrid Avatar, and the Putrid Trio. After that, a couple more bosses in Caleb, and then we're done for now. Hmm, should have leveled. It's all right. Physic, Physic is a heal. That's not gonna help. And I'm probably not gonna get the Holy Tier until like way, way, way later, near the end of the run. That's kind of a bummer. Why is it not locked onto the guy? Why is it locked onto the horse? What is wrong with me? Come back. Nice cavalry, please. Oh, he's coming. And he's dead. Oh, the buff just ran out. Unfortunate. I think his body just like seized a little bit at the end there when I pulled my sword out of him. Definitely need to level up here. The Beast Mindu honestly can be kind of tricky. You know, sometimes it's not too bad and then other times it can be really bad. Because they hit pretty hard. Like, it's mainly like you have the, the throwing knife guy who can just keep throwing things at you while you're trying to get to him. It keeps dodging your hits and if your damage is bad it's kind of scary but this damage is not that bad. Unless it's something that's wholly resistant. Let's see. What were we doing? I think we were getting strength to 18. Endurance up. No, maybe we were going faith to 50. Because now I can take the sore seal. Oh, it's already off. Never mind. But now I can one hand. That was the that was the why. Because I wanted to be able to do some one handed attacks. Hello, bear. Gotta be very sneaky. Let's see if I can get a backstab. Did I miss? Oh god, the eye frames, man. Lamb. Okay, yeah, and this is where it becomes a problem is when you need to heal and he just keeps throwing things at you. And then you got the guy with the great sword chasing you as well. Okay, cool. No, this is bad. It's fine. All good. Ow. Death to all beastmen. Okay, we'll get out of here. Should I? Hmm. I'll work back here. This will just give me some flasks back. Just in case I need them. And it's not much longer of a run. If it was like the other part of Kayla, it probably would have just worked out. Not fast traveled. But we're in the Dragon Barrel, at least for this boss. I was thinking about this the other day, but I fought like 500 Knights Cavalries, right? I've done over 50 runs of this game, and on each run I fight 10 Knights Cavalries. I know it's random, but you know, I was just thinking it because of the, the Avatar, but the Knights Cavalry is like the most common boss by a lot. I fought a lot of these guys too. I mean, I fought probably six on every run. Two in the Ernie, one in 
two, wait, one in Limgrave, yeah, one in Limgrave, two in Kaelid, that's five right there, and then two in the Snowfield plus Mountaintops, one of those is a double, so seven. Seven every run. It's a lot of these things. It's a lot of Stradiums. Alright, getting this just in case I die trying to fall here. It's been known to happen. I don't actually know where I drop, that's the problem. I just kind of wing this. Well, that seemed to be okay. Where's the rock? Where's the... Breakable rock, right here? Right here. Hit it! Thank you. It's a very slow swing. I think I was hitting L2, it's probably why. Can't help it. Bad habit. I have no idea how standard damage is in this fight. Probably not amazing. I think really the only good thing is strike. Well, I'm really not that high of a level. I keep, like, I keep thinking I can level like once or twice. I can level like, well, I guess four times. Not many more, but still. Okay, it's definitely dropping off. We're going three, three, like three points on attack power per level. And then here it's two. So I think 50 is where we'll hold this for now. Get more endurance in mind. I think they'll mind. And then we'll go more faith probably near the end of the run. Well, I wish I had a torch. That was the nice thing about St. Trina's torch doing that run was uh, I could see in dungeons. And like, I'm so used to going through these in the dark anyways, it's whatever, but it was just, you know, it was nice for once to actually be able to see. I guess I'll grab the boluses here. Why not? Hmm, pick it up. And we'll throw this on here. Boom. Okay, so we'll probably have to two-hand here, because if you one-hand against Crystallians, unless you have, like, specific weapons, it's like you're hitting a crystal like this. Wait, am I one-handing? Oh, you can just- wait, what? Huh? You can just swing through a giant crystal, huh? You can't swing through these guys. Unless you do an R2? Actually, maybe with an R2. An R1 one, though. Wait, what? Maybe it's the holy damage or something that makes you able to do it. That's interesting. Not what I would have expected. Or maybe standard damage is different. I don't really know. I am shocked. Damn, I was really hoping it would hit both of them. Not quite in range. This guy's just watching. fight. It's pretty much over. All you have to do for these guys once you break them is just R1. 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 If you have a faster weapon, it's easier to make it so they can't do anything. R2. R1. Alright. Kalem Ruins. Going this way. So we have the Bell Bearing Hunter, we got Battle Mage Shoes, Queen Runite Duo, and then the Apostle in Zitawa, right there. And then after that, there's only four Kaelid bosses left. We'll do them later, though, at different times. How can I? 
I would like one torch, please. Thank you. Where do you think the merchants go when the bell bearing hunters invade? I wonder. Also, what about Muriel? He's just gone. And you think he, like, it's not even like he could just get up and go. He's a giant turtle. You know he's not moving quickly. Ah, I was a little late on that. That did not do much damage. Oh, thank God that staggered. <laughs> I didn't think it would. Oh, come on. So these two bosses should not be bad. Leroy Knights, actually, I don't know if they're resistant to holy damage or not. They might be. I haven't fought one yet. Either way, I don't think it'll be that bad. And the Apostle... That could be scary. He is resistant to holy damage. And hits pretty hard, so we'll see. Yeah, me actually, uh, oh, I got the buff at least. That's nice of the game to allow me to have that. How many does he do? Five? Okay, well. He would have done five. I thought that was going to miss. I was expecting a, a sideways slash, not a vertical slash. And it almost whiffed. How much more... How many more days till DLC? It made it through a month. Still got a ways to go, though. And this jump's kind of tricky. You know, I'm going to jump to this branch. Just to be safe, so I don't randomly die. Because you can definitely take fall damage doing that jump. Which means if you jump from too much higher, you will die. Yes, endurance. Yeah, I think what I'll start doing for YouTube runs, once once I've played through the DLC a couple times and have a... Once I know where all the bosses are, I think whenever I do an Elden Ring run. I'm going to do the weapons I've already done for YouTube and just do DLC. And maybe like every other weapon will be... I don't know. I, 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 guess, I guess I didn't really think about it too much. But I probably have done like seven or eight YouTube runs of Elden Ring. And I think it'd be a good idea just to finish those. And then in between... Once I start going back to the other games, then I'll just like... I'll do that, I guess. That makes sense. So... After like a month or two, probably a month of DLC, I'll come back to the other games for YouTube runs. But in between like the other games, I'll do like an Elden Ring run and just finish up one of these runs. Actually, I actually don't know how many YouTube exclusive Elden Ring runs there are. I did make a playlist, not a playlist, but uh, there's like a section on my channel page, on the home page of just the YouTube runs. In case you do not want to watch the live streamed runs. Some people might not want to just because there's a chat. I get that. Scare, we're going back here. Yeah, it's crazy to think though. I've done like 30 YouTube runs, I think. 30 something. Across all the games. I don't know that we'll have any Bloodborne YouTube runs. I mean, maybe, but. All the Bloodborne runs have already been requested for Twitch, so... <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. For real, though, I don't think we're gonna have a Bloodborne run for a bit. I mean, in under two years, I think I've done... What, was it 12 runs? 12 runs of Bloodborne over almost half the weapons. And I think we're, like, at 15% through Dark Souls 2 and 3. Probably around the same thing for Elden Ring, but that'll go down once you'll see it. If you thought there was a lot of Elden Ring now, just wait till DLC hits. 
like as far as weapons go, right? Like this 15% is going to become like 10%. I'm going to have like 7,000 hours in this game if I actually stick with this. Probably like 20% of the way through Dark Souls 1. Oh, it actually worked. That usually never works. I usually like end up falling. I have to quit out if I do that jump. I'm surprised it worked. <laughs> I didn't even mean to do it that way. Which kind of happened. All right, rest it up for the Godskin Apostle. Ooh, that's actually not that bad. 500 is acceptable. I mean, this guy is... Like, he's moderately resistant to holy. It's not Elden Beast resistance, but... You know, I guess gods can do is like the main threat really for godskins and they just have a lot of health. So if something is moderately resistant and they have godskin duo health, it can be a tough fight. But this guy, not so bad. Or two. Dead. Cool. So back to here. Do Margaret. I was just thinking about a comment I got this morning. Or I saw this morning on uh, <laughs> one, of the, one of the Hannah Millennium videos. It was kind of funny. Some dude thought I was botting my views because um, I think it had, I don't remember how many it was, just over a thousand on that one video. And it had like 12 likes and two comments and the dude was convinced I was botting and I'm just like, why would I bot anything other than part one of a run, first of all? And two, like, what's, why would I, like, I have so many videos, why would I bot one video? I thought it was funny. I deleted it because I was, like, pretty upset this morning. <laughs> Not at the comment, just in general, I was in a bad mood, I'm just like, I'm not dealing with this. The YouTube is weird though, man. Like sometimes videos like I you know I don't get a ton of views and I'm not like this this is not the kind of channel that's gonna get hundreds of thousands on every video. Like that is not how this channel is designed. But it is just weird sometimes how sometimes I'll get like a thousand when the average is like 10 times lower. But that's YouTube in a nutshell, I think, right? Like that happens all the time to other people on different scales. You know, you'll have people that get like 10K a video, randomly get like 100,000, over 100,000 million. I just thought that what comment was funny though. Like what, what is a, a video, what, what does a video with those stats look like? How many comments and likes should it have? Because that guy appears to be an expert. I think the weirdest thing for me too is when like part one isn't the best part it's like it'll be like part seven or something that gets like the most views and it's just like why what's youtube doing oh, i didn't want to get this yet well, but of course. i think if i headed my way i think the most viewed part would be wherever i start new game plus that or part one part one i think is you know just most likely to get more views because it's part one and then uh after that, whenever I start doing all bosses. Sometimes though, the, the awkward thing is I start all bosses in like the middle of a part, and that's kind of weird. But sometimes that's just how it is. I try to make it so I end, uh, you know, new game at the end of a part, but it doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes it's easier to do than others though. Like, I feel like it's easy to do it in Dark Souls 3. Kind of easy in 
in Elden Ring. But not always. I don't, did we on this one? No, we, we started New Game Plus in the middle of, I think, Part 3. To be fair, I thought it would take longer to get through Godskin Duo all the way to Ratabeast, given the fact that we had over 50% holy damage. What do we have right now, by the way? Way more than 50. All right, let's go mind. Yeah, we'll do 16, why not? That'll work. Kodrick. Does he do... Do I have to hit him one more time to get the... Yeah, I do. Okay. To get the transition to start. That's what I was going to say. I love that scream. <laughs> I will always love that scream. So bright. So we just gotta basically do the normal round until we get to Radon. We'll do Radon and then Ward Dead, and then I'm gonna go to the round table. I gotta get the dagger from Fia and then give it to what's his face? D. And then I don't know when he dies. Does he die like right after that? I don't know. And then once we get to Deep Root, we can do Fortis Axe and then kill D. Beautiful sunny Lyrnia. I really just can't wait until DLC, man. It's gonna be so much fun. I feel like that first drop that you do here is like super, super high. Like, I feel like you should be dead if you drop from that height to the gravestone jetting out of the wall. But you do not. You live. Honestly, I kind of forgot we fought the clean run night duo. <laughs> kind of just like spaced out, I think, for that fight. Like, I remember fighting them, but I don't remember anything of the fight. Nope. Wrong button. It's trying to hit X. Or A, I guess. One hand. One hand. I don't know. Damn, poisoned. Playing Sword Insignia. Do I want that? Well, I'll take a look in a minute. Not that. Yeah, whatever, it's fine. All right, now we need to make sure we do not run over the Arterial Leaf. We do not want to aggro the lobster. Where's the Arterial Leaf? Right there, to the left. Okay, let's see. Axe Talisman's fine. I mean, I think these are all fine. The Wing Sword Insignia will be good for Rykard. Honestly, though, I don't know if I want... You know, I don't know if I need the, um... Or your Dry Shard. I use L2, like, once per fight. Maybe twice. Could probably take that off and do the Wing Sword Insignia. See more Endurance. I don't think I have anything else I'd really want at this point. I'll probably end up doing Ritual Shield Talisman, or Sword Talisman, rather. I already have Ritual Shield Talisman. So we'll probably get through, through Lyrnia. Well, not through, there's the whole thing. We'll get through, like, this first part. And go to Volcano Manor, I think, in the next 20 or so minutes. And the next time we'll do Radon, we can start doing Fia's quest.
good fight. One Hound Knight, then we got another Deathbird after that. Then the Omen Killer, the Air Tree Avatar, and a couple other bosses. The Lyrian music is like sufficiently creepy. Unsettling a little bit? I don't know. A little eerie, I guess. Maybe eerie is a good word for it. It's cool though. I think it's the combat music, mainly. Well, the ambient music is a little bit. What a, what a hit. You know, I still don't think I've died on this run. And I hate that I haven't died, because now there's so much pressure to stay alive. If I didn't die in the first two parts, then I have not died, because I have not died since uh, Godskin Duo. Well, aside from the um, Grafted Scion scripted death, you have to die there. Very Demon Souls-esque. I don't think any of the other games made you die at the beginning of the game. Dark Souls 1, you don't have to die. Nor 2, nor 3, nor Bloodborne. Sekiro, you kind of, but not really. Like, you don't get a you died. You just get a cutscene. But yeah, I don't think I died in the first two hours. And if I did, then all the death claim, death list claims are Invalid. I feel like it'd be easier for me if I pretended I died in like the first hour, but now I have it in my head that I haven't, so. I think I know where my first death will be too. I feel like it's gonna be on the way to the death right bird. It's probably gonna be to gravity. <laughs> I have a I have a strong feeling. Whatever it is. But you never know. I could just be careless and die of a snail. For all I know. Well, Albus has to die once again. Sorry, old man. You talk way too much, though. Please, no. Poor guy. He just wanted a friend. What? Wow. Tanky dog. I take that. Oh, I could just do that. Wow, he just staggers that easily, huh? Crucible Knot Talisman. Reducing the headshot penalty. So useful. I don't really see when other than PvP, and even then, like, I feel like you're better off using other talismans. I don't see when that talisman would be that useful. I wonder if these earth trees are destined to become, like, the, the big earth tree sized. I don't really know. Maybe. Maybe that's why there's so many earth trees in the final boss arena, because all of them are just, like, trees that ended up growing. I'm greedy. So we got the snail next, then bulls carry knights, and then we got Smarag and the Academy Crystal Cave boss. Duo Crystallion. 
We're probably through... We gotta be over, like, 40-something. Bosses in. Close to 50, I would say. Don't know for sure, though. Can't remember where, like, uh... What the count would be here. The run kind of slows down after the Dragon Bear, I would say. Because the Dragon Bear has got, like, tough stuff in it. And then you go back to the Urnia, and it's just, like, super easy stuff. Like, we're killing a snail, for God's sakes. But, you know, these are all, like, relatively early game bosses that don't scale that hard into New Game Plus. Think around, like, Altus picks up again. I mean, you have a little blip with Radon and then more dead catacombs. And then back to Lyernia for, like, a handful of bosses. But even in Altus, it's not too bad. It's not really till, like, the mountaintops. Uh, that's where it gets tricky. And things really start hitting hard. But that's just how these runs are, you know? In Dark Souls 1, I feel like you get the opposite. Demon Souls, you get the opposite. Dark Souls 2, you know? Those bosses are way tankier in New Game Plus compared to DS3 and Elden Ring. Bloodborne, too. Yeah. But if there's some, like, alternate leveling in the DLC, that can make things a little more interesting, because it won't be level... I mean, I'd be level 200 for every every run, because that's roughly where I am on all these characters when I end. Like, between 180 and 200. But if that is kind of nullified by DLC, that can make it more exciting, I think. But we'll see what happens when we get it. I'm sure they'll probably say more by two-handing, yeah. I can't even tell because the armor is just so big. At this point, though, I don't think I want to know more about the DLC. I think what they've shown is enough. We got a trailer. Miyazaki gave some interviews. I feel like they will put another trailer out in like a couple months, maybe, as we get closer, and then a probably launch trailer. Don't watch the launch trailer if you don't want spoilers. It is never a good idea. Because it usually spoils, like, so much. As far as, like, what things look like. It spoiled Estelle, I'm pretty sure. I think it spoiled the part of Ronnie's ending, where she's just sitting in front of the moon. I do wonder, too, if, like, it's going to tie in at all with the main story. With the Black Knives and you know, Godwin and Ronnie dying, or if it's just going to be completely separate. Won't know until we get it. Yeah, but you couldn't be like, ah, whatever, it's fine. Facing the other way, I was gonna say. I'm completely stuck here. Stone Sword key check. Eight. Okay. Definitely need more. I need probably another three at least. There's one in here I can get. Oh, I could die here. There's a very scary, very scary mage here. I might just kill him, honestly. He can one-shot you. That's why he's scary. He's got one attack. It's basically like getting shot with a shotgun. Point blank. Not too many people probably have survived that. Let's do one of each of these. Mind and Endurance. I think I'll try to get into Ray Lucaria. And then next time we can do Volcano Manor, we'll do Radon. Start Thea's quest. That's the attack right there you just did. If that hits you, point blank, you probably die. Stone Sword Key. So we need seven for Altus, and then four for beyond that. So I have, what, eight? Seven? Okay, I need four more. Damn, I'm behind. The Sealed Tunnel will have one. What else? Uh, Lance Axe. There's one near Lance Axe, and then I gotta think about the other two. The 
The Putrid Trio is like easily the, the toughest Crystallian fight. Any of the other ones are a cakewalk. I mean, it probably depends on what point in the game you're at, too. Like, if you're, you know, here super early and you fight the Crystallian, the Trio much later, you're over leveled, then this could be harder, but. Let's say you're fighting them all at level one. The trio, obviously, because it's a trio, is harder and it has rot. But, like, I think they actually have the most health and probably deal the most damage. Okay, Lake Shore. Uh, what is it? It's this one. Lake Shore. So, we're at Tree Burial Watchdog next. Then we have Volcano Manor. We'll Ray the Kari, then Volcano Manor. In that order. Grace is way... It's always so much further up than I think it is. I always think it's going to be, like, right here somewhere. I don't know why. Like, I've got this so many times, and somehow I just still can never remember where it is. I shot a storm bill right there. It looks very... I don't know. Flat from the outside. It's just, like, rectangular. Like, you can't see anything, but it, it just looks so bland, I guess, from, from this side. This would be a good candidate for death, honestly. It's a random, random fall death. Not today. Oh, we gotta die to... Yeah, we're gonna die to the virgin. Okay, well, that takes care of that, then. That's an acceptable first death. I don't think there are too many points where I intentionally die in the run, but there definitely are some. Lake of Rot is another one. Like, I don't need to there, but it's just easier because there's a Stake America near the Dragonkin Soldier. But yeah, I'm not changing the run up just so I don't, or the, I'm not changing the run so I don't die. It's not a deathless run. I mean, it might be right now, I don't know, but you know what I mean? Like, I'm not trying to do a deathless run. I'll take as few deaths as possible, though. Just makes for a faster run. I just think, though, if it's, if it is actually deathless, if it was deathless in New Game, I think it's funny that I got it with this weapon, because the late game is just, like, tougher with this weapon. I just don't really feel like going back and watching the first two parts, though, <laughs> to see if I died. And if I did die, I would put it in like I put in every death. Well, OK, that's not entirely true. If I if I'm at a boss for like a couple hours, I probably won't do every single attempt. I do a lot of them. I would probably do most of them. And usually I'm not on bosses for that long, but sometimes it does happen in Bloodborne. It's probably the only game it really happens in. But for the most part, I put, like, every death in. I'll just edit out a lot of the fight itself. I usually edit out the, uh... I edit the fights where I don't win, basically. Although I feel like doing that is kind of a spoiler, almost. Right? If, if something's edited, it's like, oh, well, he didn't, he didn't make it through this one. Also, there are timestamps anyways, so... Timestamp the winning attempt. That's also another spoiler. But for really long attempts, I'm starting to actually edit those. Oh, I guess I... Did I get this already? I did not. No, we haven't been here. Yeah, I'm starting to edit... Longer fights. Basically. Because there's some really long ones. You know, how runs coming up. Dark Moon Longbow is kind of... I don't know. That one's not going to be too edited. I, I wish I could have edited it more. The problem... So, like, I've, I've probably... I've explained it before. Like, I'm going through all the boss kills and everything to see roughly how long these boss kills take on average. And anything that's, like, super long, longer than average, I'm going to cut down. The problem is I haven't had a chance to go through all the DS3 stuff yet. I've been doing Elden Ring for a while just because I'm trying to get the hand ballista up. Um, and that's almost done. So the hand ballista should be going up like fairly soonish. I'd say within a month, I'll start uploading that. It'll still be a long run, but it, it's not going to be like 30 something hours. I'm thinking more like 20 max, hopefully. But we'll see. I mean, Reichhardt was a two hour fight. <laughs> I'm going to cut that down to like, I don't even know, probably under 20 minutes if I can. I mean, I probably can, but what a what an adventure that attempt was. That was a it was a journey. It was that long. 
But anyway, yeah, the Dark Moon Longbow. Some things will be edited, some things won't. And I just wish I could have got through the DS3 bosses to actually edit that more. But in the future, I will. I got to do the same thing with Dark Souls 1 with the Straight Sword Hilt, because some of those fights have been very, very long. ONS, I think, was over an hour in New Game Plus. It might have been the longest one. Four Kings, whenever I get to that, is going to be probably the longest. Maybe DLC, I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to call this one here. We'll pick up next time with Volcano Manor. We got some Altus to do after that. Then Caleb, then more Lyria, then Altus. A lot of stuff to do. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.